So I guess it's no surprise to anyone that the Game Boy Advance is my favorite handheld of all time. It's got everything you want. It's basically a portable Super Nintendo, right? And I've modded one before on this channel, but what I've had then was one of those older screens from Funny Playing, and I really like it. I really like the brightness of it, the viewing angles, and it's, it's essentially a really great mod. But I was browsing AliExpress the other day, and I found a drop-in screen, which really caught my attention, because until now I found these for the Game Boy Color and the original DMG, but it, I've never found these for the Game Boy Advance. Now, they call these like laminated drop-in screens, V5, they've like a ton of names for them, but essentially what this is, is an all-in-one unit that you kind of drop into the shell, connect it to the motherboard, and you're good to go. So sometimes you gotta solder a point here and there, but it's really simple, and the whole thing is just very appealing if you're new to modding or even if you're a veteran. So while these older generations of screens are very good, they're very difficult to get perfect and I am a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff. It's the reasons I've never sold any of my mods. It's because I don't think I'm like good enough to compete with what's out there and I really think that this is something that you should perfect before you ever think about selling anything. But Essentially, older screens have a couple of components. They have the screen, sometimes there's a tool that helps you align it, and then there's the lens on top of it. Now, between installing all of these three components, you get dust, you get other things, fingerprints, and if you mess up one of these things, you can't really go back. So once these older screens are in the system, they're glued in there. It, it, you gotta rip them open and practically destroy the screen. And these new IPS screens don't have that issue. There are some permanent components to it, but essentially, Essentially, the whole thing is one unit. There's no layers of stuff that you need to balance or that you can't get wrong. There's no alignment issues because the whole thing is just one unit and it's really, really appealing to me as a modder. So let's see if we can revive an old broken GBA that I got from the flea market and see where we go from there. So here we go, I actually got this Game Boy Advance from the flea market on video. It's a couple videos back, I guess I'll put it in the thing. It was exactly 2000 yen, which is really good in this day and age. And here's the shell that we're going to replace it in. It's really good, especially for an AliExpress aftermarket shell that came with this screen practically for free. I gotta say, the finish is really nice and it's, it's, it's got a really good feel to it. We've come a long way since the super cheapy plastic shells that we used to get for these things. I'll just organize everything, get my screwdrivers ready, and yeah, let's get to it. The buttons also really feel nice, by the way. And this is the biggest part of the mod. You're about to see how easy this is. You just kind of, bam, put it into the case and yeah, that's it. That's the whole process of putting the screen into the case. Now, these are two touch sensors that came onto it. They hang on to these little wires. And to install them, you just stick them to the front of the case and then you can use that part to control the screen in case you don't want to solder anything. Now, I don't like this and I'll explain why at the end of the video, but I essentially just really prefer controlling the screen with the buttons and I'll probably remove these in the future. Now, let's take our Game Boy Advance apart. And for this mod, we really only need the motherboard since we're replacing everything else on it. If you want to use your original shell, I don't really recommend that since you got to cut it out and you'll destroy the shell and there's really no perfect way to do that. And with this whole new generations of screens and parts, it's better to just get an all-in-one kit so you know that it'll fit without any other modifications to your original Game Boy shell. The reason for this is that these newer screens are bigger than the original one and they also have a lot more components that just need more space most of the time. If you do decide to use your original shell for whatever reason, the website provides a good guide on where and how to cut it. This goes for every Game Boy Advance screen that you would buy on AliExpress. Now the kit comes with two different ribbon cables for different versions of the GBA, but essentially you just pick the one that fits and you connect it like this. Don't forget to close those little levers because it's very important that this doesn't come apart. Then you put the slim end of the ribbon cable onto the screen like this and you close that lever and we're done. 
Now let's take our soldering irons and solder these three included cables to the board. Don't worry, when you buy these things, it's always listed where you have to solder what and it's, it's really not that hard. So apologies for the quality, but yeah, soldering and filming at the same time is not that easy, but you just add some solder to the point and then just put the wire on it. Then solder the other end of that wire onto the part marked on the screen. And it might be worth noting that this is probably a better idea to do before you connect the ribbon cable because you might damage it. If I, mine turned out okay, but yeah, that, that, that wasn't smart. So following the guides, we just connect the other cables and that's it. It's that simple. Be careful not to lose these cables. They're so thin and tiny that I actually lost mine. So I had to get a replacement here. Luckily I had this on hand, but yeah, something to be careful about. And this is what it should look like when you've soldered all three of the cables. Um, not a bad job if I do say so myself, but definitely still an amateur at this. And this is why I don't sell none of this because I'm a hobbyist doing a hobby and just showing you guys what I do on the internet. I also believe that you can always learn new things and it's it's really cool to document that as I go on we get better and we learn new things every time we try something like this. Hopefully leading to bigger and better mods and projects in the future. Now let's continue by adding the buttons and rubber pads that came with the kit. And again, I gotta say the quality of this case buttons and rubber pads are phenomenal. This is a really well put together kit, especially for the price that I paid. So I can definitely highly recommend it and I'll put the link in the description. Now closing the case is a bit tricky. Make sure you align that speaker correctly within the hole. It has tabs to show you where it goes. And also these bumpers and L and R buttons are always a bit tricky to get perfect. So it took me a couple tries, but don't worry, take your time and you'll figure it out in no time. It really fits together like a well-designed puzzle. Don't forget the three screws holding the motherboard in place. Now, as always with new shells, this is going to be really, really stiff. So don't be afraid to use some extra force while putting these screws in, but also be careful not to break anything. Now it's time for the L and R buttons. They kind of slide into a part on here. It makes sense when you see it and it's really hard to film, so apologies for that. Sometimes they don't come with the metal tabs to slide them in place, but in general they should. If they don't, you can just use the ones from your old Game Boy Advance. Now let's put the back part of the shell on and again it takes a little bit of puzzling and, and figuring out where everything goes. Especially with the bumpers and L and R buttons like you can see here but as long as you don't force anything there's really not a lot that can go wrong here. Then let's screw everything together and we're good to go. Now I'm going to use these rechargeable batteries to test it out but as you'll see in a minute that's really only for testing purposes. And she's working. As you can see the light button is completely freaking out. That's because these batteries are just not enough for the screen. The screen uses a lot of batteries. So that's where our second part of the mod will come in. Taken straight out of my other GBA, it's the USB-C lithium-ion battery mod from retromodding.com. And this is just an all-in-one drop-in battery that you can use on any Game Boy Advance without any modification to the shell. And yeah, this is amazing. This is uh, really cool. Look how easy that was. I think it's time to uh, take this baby for a spin. <laughs> screen menu pops up by pressing select L and R and you use those same three buttons to navigate through the menu. You can change different options with select and then change the values by pressing L and R again. Now the first is obviously the brightness. It goes all the way to 15 which is really bright but it comes in handy with the pixel effects which we'll see in a minute. Unless the room is really bright I think the middle brightness is more than enough. Then we have different color modes and you can even set it to black and white so if that's how you want to play your Game Boy Advance games, go ahead. I think this is more for normal Game Boy games. Now the next option is the pixel effects and this is really where the screen shines. So I did my best to zoom in to show you exactly what happens when you turn these effects on because it's really difficult to show on camera. Here's the normal gameplay with zero pixel effects. And here is Pixel Effect 1. It emulates the Game Boy's LCD screen and it looks really good. 
it does make the image a lot darker so i ended up just turning the brightness all the way up when using this the second pixel effect was a vertical scan line which kind of remind me of my trinitron's aperture grill it's fun but i never really found a purpose to use this now the third and in my opinion the best pixel effect is the scan line option look at this this is amazing we've got scan lines on an actual game boy and considering how many super nintendo ports are out on the game boy advanced it just looks so at home this is donkey kong country 2 i also play donkey kong country 1 and a bunch of other of super nintendo ports and it just looks so good and the last option is a frame blending mode which i haven't found any use for but they say some games look better with it so yeah this mod could not have turned out any better the games look so beautiful on it the colors really pop out the screen is super crispy and super vibrant now take a look at my other modded GBA. You see that gap in between the lens and the screen? There's some dust particles that are really hard to see on camera, but they're definitely noticeable when you're playing. So depending on your skills as a modder and how much time you spend on it, this screen will just never be 100% perfect. Comparing that to the new screen, you can see there's no gap, there's nothing in between the screen and the glass, and it's just, it's just perfectly aligned exactly the way that it should be. Even Game Boy games look really good on this and they use the color palettes for the Super Game Boy so it's really an enhanced experience. Of course Game Boy Color games speak for themselves. I'm still planning on doing a Game Boy Color mod in the future but until then this is a great way to experience these games. I'm super happy with how this turned out. Notice how my fingers are on the back of the Game Boy. Now usually my pinky rests on the bottom of it and it touches the touchscreen thing from the beginning of the video which activates the menu and it's a whole mess so it's really better to just solder those wires in and use the buttons for the menu because it just gives you that much more control over the screen but yeah there you have it super happy with how this came out and i'm gonna be playing this a lot over the weekend hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you for watching it as always hit that like button if you liked the video hit that dislike button if you disliked it and i'll see you guys in the next one peace